Hello everyone, Morris here. Today I'm bringing you some well, key balance changes for pre-season 8 in X Infinity Origins. So a lot of changes and obviously you can't really go through all of them, though definitely check out the you know, official blog, uh, well official change log, but also of course my blog post as well. Uh, in this video I'm just going to kind of quickly go through like what I think are the key ones. And well, first of all, it's really a lot of changes. 20 new runes, like that's I think like the biggest ever, really. Uh, and 10 new charms. The charms are I would say less exciting, but still quite important. Uh, yeah, and then of course uh, there will be some you know uh, cards changes. Not a lot to be honest, uh, but it's really the runes this this the highlight of this particular change log, I would say. Um, so before getting to the actual changes, I uh, do want to say that, okay, so the uh, actual changes will be live, I think, on 20th of March, uh, if all goes to plan, that's what uh, they say. And uh, this time round, actually, all the so-called new runes and charms will be available, like, free for free like for the preseason right so meaning you can actually just play with it in your um you know just normal kind of arena mode kind of thing like you don't have to just go into the esports modes i think so that's why i understand so definitely that means more people will be able to play with those runes and charms so hopefully yeah, it will just be more fun for more people but also you know hopefully catch some of the more you know unwanted interactions let's put it that way Okay, uh, yeah, so let's just then get into the actual well, changes. Um, of course, there are other things. Uh, if you want to read into it, like you know, some prizes for preseason uh, you know, leaderboard kind of thing for collectible. Uh, but yeah, so that's for you to kind of read more. So let's just get into uh, the new things. Okay, first of all is meat. So okay, wow, this is a very big picture of meat. And it's basically the, the new starter XC for season eight so there's only one uh, i assume it's a plant and uh yeah it basically has sleep synergy so that's basically the key right it's about sleep of course um you know as most starter axes it's not going to be very op but it does have some you know unique features so let's just go through them uh, i would say the main one is of course the well, power power is always interesting right so in this case the power uh, gives a meditate right the card is three meter um, and what it does is that you know, it can actually target any ally, so you can put it on the other allies. And it says, uh, before each turn ends, then gain one stack per enemy with sleep. Right? And then what happens is that, so this is more of a buff, actually. Uh, so uh, this meditate buff, uh, well, we will gain one stack per enemy with sleep right? after each turn ends. So that's why uh, it's a sleep synergy. And what happens is, Okay, after 11 turns, so that's a lot of turns, right, then you deal 15 damage per stack to the enemy. So that's really like a lot of turns, so the Axie has to survive, and then of course you have to put a lot of sleep turns uh, so that it will actually be worth it. So, and of course, opponent can also wake themselves up, right? So yeah, it's not going to be easy, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, of course, potentially you can deal a lot of damage, but it is very, very, very delayed. Okay, so it's something fun for, for a casual player, uh, but not likely to be competitive. Okay, so uh, yeah, don't think I'll go into too much about uh, the actual cards, but I do want to talk about the runes and charms because those uh, usually have quite a lot of impact. So let's talk about the rune first, the Meat's Sweet Dream. Uh, not too exciting, to be honest. Okay, so plus you know, max HP, sure. And then I guess the exciting part is more about, okay, once per turn, on your turn, right? When sleep is applied to an enemy, then apply two sleep to that enemy. So um, yeah, so this is more about more sleep synergy. So it's not, I must say, it's not really too strong, right? So it's this, yeah, put more sleep. That that's basically it. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, my opponent can still wake themselves up with just like one energy or even zero energy. So in that sense is, yeah, I would say depending on of course the rest of the sleep package. And you can see there are other cards that synergizes with sleep. Uh, but I think the Big one, I would say, is actually the Meat's Comfy Pillow. This charm, I think, can can actually be, I would say, epic level in that sense, right? So because what it does is it can alter any like single attack cards. Right? It says initial, apply to sleep. So yeah, I mean, well, usually you play Tiny Turtle for a reason, right? And now you can literally just play, you know, 
kind of like a tiny turtle uh, but for any single attack card I right, just put a 4pp charm on and of course sure you still have the initial part but you don't have the downside of the tiny turtle as well so yeah I can see that this can actually be quite good the problem of course is that it's gonna be a bit clunky for a certain type of team let's say for example if you're an aggro team you know like putting sleep might not be the Thing you want to do but i think for other kind of teams especially like you know maybe poison a slower kind of team let's try to slow things down then i think this can actually be very good so definitely something to look out for especially in rare but also even even maybe in epic or maybe mystic who knows okay uh so okay along with those uh then olic right, is uh, another one that's got some changes um so to be honest, not much. Well, actually, when I say not much, it's, it's uh, actually well, the main one I would say is actually Beetroot that now basically completely reworked to becoming like a Leafy. Basically, it's a Leafy, right? Uh, but we can, so not an evolved version of Leafy. So uh, this definitely can uh, go into Leafy synergy right? for a casual player who just want to pick up Leafy and then, you know, Oleg will be one of the ways, I think, in which you can get players to learn about a Leafy mechanic and then they might want to shop for Leafy Axes. Uh, so, yeah, so that's, I think, the main one. Uh, and then, yeah, I think quite a lot of, like, other cards that actually apply Leafs. So, obviously, another, you know, Leafy synergy kind of thing. Uh, yeah, so that's basically for Oleg. So more about like, you know, Leaf and Leafy. Okay, Ina, of course, yes, talk about Ina, right? So Ina, uh, you can see the main thing is that there's no changes uh, with the uh, Magic Sack, which is the main one, of course, <laughs> of why people play Ina. But like, let's just get into the actual changes. Uh, I would say, um, yeah, Cup now is actually pretty good because now it's kind of reworked, right? It says you know, it's zero energy cost. Okay, so, I just got a bit right. so that's the main thing. Zero energy cost, it has retained. Then you can do pick up two cards in hand and then you can retain them until your next turn. So effectively, it's a free retain for two cards for one turn. So I would say that's definitely something that some combo teams or something might want to use for sure. Uh, so it's definitely usable. Uh, of course, a lot of magic set, right? And then actually, well, Mandarin also buffed a bit with you know, the reverse heal. Um, but I think also the Aegis uh, Talisman as well, I think actually is pretty strong now, right? Actually, because it draws a card. I think that's, yeah, quite crazy, I must say, right? It just draws a card and actually applies sleep to a random enemy. So I'm not sure where this came from right, in terms of the change, uh, but, and actually I don't have know if there's a new stat, maybe it's just the old stat, but yeah, it just literally draw a card and apply sleep, well, one sleep, which might not be too useful, but of course, then this is where like it may have some synergy with other things that apply them more sleep. So uh yeah i think it's still or drawing that card itself is already pretty powerful so i think ina can definitely see play in of course you know more casual kind of uh, teams but maybe even some niche teams right like combo teams okay All right the next thing i want to talk about is energy coin so energy coin is well if you play hearthstone or other kind of uh, card games and you probably know about a coin and this is basically the same thing but in this case it's for fragment so player one uh, interestingly is a player one who gets the coin all right so player one because well the past two three seasons i think right player two has always had some sort of advantage maybe like 54 46 that kind of thing so there's the way of trying trying to balance it so what it, it does is that player one gets a coin and it has retained a zero energy, of course, and then it gains one fragment. Yeah, and then XL. So it is a card, if I understand correctly. And so, of course, they would then have certain synergy with uh, certain, like, sort of uh, cards played this turn kind of thing. Um, yeah, but it's only one card, so it may not be too significant. Uh, but maybe that one fragment could be quite significant in terms of just wrapping to energy burst or is this even cotton tail turn right because it might be um, sometimes maybe one off from cotton tail turn and then having that coin could definitely help so yeah interesting to see whether players will actually then you know, think about playing uh, choosing first rather than second just because uh, typically i think most you know uh, matches i played let's say last season i right, most opponents will play uh will choose to go second so yeah let's just see let's just see Okay, then let's go into the new mechanics and mechanics changes. We've already seen the meditate. Uh, and then Boak, actually, not much change. It's just, yeah, um, 
the stack loss changed from two to three. Uh, okay, then there are more new stuff that I'll actually get into when we actually get into the cards or runes or charms. Okay, then let's just get into the two cards. So energy coin I already mentioned, and then Mandarin I also mentioned. Uh, so giant bubble, I will say giant bubble is one that's uh, actually changed quite a bit because now it's just one cost and it's not a variable cost. So it will be fixed with one cost. And now the, the way it you know, scales up is actually by how many turns it's retained, right? So it's maxed by three turns. And basically, right, so each turn, I think it's plus a two bubble. So th three turns will be like six bubbles plus the base three bubbles should be like nine bubbles. Uh, yeah, so nine bubbles to allied actually seems pretty good to me, I would say, uh, for one energy. But of course, it was you, know, you need to retain it. Uh, the other thing is that the two card is owned by rune owners. So a lot of the two cards now owned by rune owners, as you'll see later. And so that actually means it's kind of like a nerf, actually, because if that rune owner uh, is KO'd, then uh, you lost the two card, which is not ideal. Okay, so, um, but I would say it's, you know, but haven't really seen play, maybe now it's one energy could see play in some bubble kind of team. Okay, then next one is uh, Forest Wrath. Of course, this is the Rise and Ruin stuff. And first of all, yes, it has reverse heal, uh, which to be honest, doesn't really change too much. Uh, most people use it for damage, not really for heal, but now it has this option. Now, the, the main thing I think is that the uh, scaling of uh, the damage definitely well, has increased back to 15 so that's actually I think quite significant and later on you actually also see that uh, you know there are some other changes with rise and rune but yeah uh, okay same thing two cards owned by uh, rune owner so a bit of a nerf actually because then if the uh, rise and rune uh, actually got KO'd then yeah then you lose all your forest wrath which is not ideal uh, similar to Venom Burst, also two is owned by the Rune Owner. Um, also got Reverse Heal, but again, yeah, usually you don't really use it for the heal. Uh, and actually a bit of bonus uh, in terms of HP loss per Poison Stack, so I think that could make it quite significant. Um, but still, I think it, yeah, it's still going to be pretty similar, I feel, because I don't think it's going to be that, yeah, that different from before. Okay, and finally, okay, Goo is one that I should really spend a bit of time on. So, reworked again, but this time round, I think it does have some potential, even though I feel like every time I say that. Uh, so, now it says it's retained on draw. Okay, so let's say like the opponent draws a Drew, uh, Goo card. What happens is that it helps them draw a card. So, actually, it could be good, could be bad, right? So, if you if the opponent draw the Goo card, then they draw another card. Then they discard a non-cursed card, so that's the key part, right? Is that uh, it really gets rid of the opponent's non-cursed card in their hand, or whatever they drawn, they'll have to be, or they will force to discard a non-cursed card. So that's actually the main selling point, I would say. Uh, it also has retain, meaning it kind of clock up the hand, but that's really not the main point. The main point is really to, in a way, is basically a discard, right? Um, of course, it helps the opponent to cycle faster, but that is you know, not necessarily a bad thing, especially for things like Jinx. You just want them to draw more Jinx quickly, right? So you can kill them before they can kill you, right? Uh, so yeah, so I think Goo and Jinx can really come together, right? Uh, so I can definitely imagine you know, there'll be some Jinx that might put in Goo into it or something, right? Um, and maybe even other uh, curse synergy. I right, can fit into Goo. So Goo is not just like a separate uh, category, but maybe it can fit into other, uh, you know, like a curse card builds as well. Okay, so then let's talk about the card changes. Card changes are uh, not a lot, but definitely worth mentioning. Nemo, Nemo, finally, finally is, uh, is nerfed. So hopefully then no more turn one energy burst. So that's pretty crazy, right? Uh, so now, okay, so the changes. Nemo ears are uh, kept at uh, two fragments. Um, okay, so instead of three, so now it's just two, right? And also the tail. Okay, so this is actually quite important. Is that the Nemo tail will only gain fragments when it's played initial, right? Meaning you can't just get that Nemo tail and then Nemo tail and Nemo tail and then just gain three fragments, right? So you just gain one, right? The next Nemo tail you play doesn't do anything, right? Unless it's played initial, so you only can do it once per turn. But usually, of course, for Nemo tail, you just want to get rid of them. 
uh, from the deck. So then you either choose to thin out your deck, or you, but then you don't get to gain the fragment. So definitely slows down quite a bit. Uh, yeah, so quite a lot of archetype I think will take a hit, uh, like Bubble, Sandals, Perch, uh, or just even any other that really rely quite a lot on Nemo. Uh, so definitely we'll see that there will be, let's say, non-Nemo versions of certain teams that come up. For example, actually I've been playing like a non-Nemo version of like Perch uh, for the whole last season pretty much. And yeah, so I was expect that you know, people will just adapt, let's say even Sandals will just adapt to a non Nemo version, um, yeah, but I will still see say that uh, they can be somewhat viable. Of course, the power level, who knows, right? Uh, things will definitely change with all the new runes and charms as well. Okay, then let's talk about the spears. In this case, it's a spear plus because it's the evolved version that's only the evolved version that's changed, and the evolved version of, we say, bamboo, spiky, and feather spears or have a bit of a nice buff in the sense of uh, it will add basically three leaves or three spikes of three feathers uh, to the uh, spike uh, spear card holders, all right, if the deck has like three spear cards. Of course, if so, meaning is instead of three, two, two, it's three, three, three. Um, so, so it's like kind of even. Um, yeah, so of course, if you only have two spear cards, then it will just be two, two, right, uh, and then zero for the non uh, spear card holder. So uh, definitely quite significant, I would say, for Leafy, because Leafy really relies on the Leaf, and uh, especially in a rare era, but even in the you know epic era, if the opponent doesn't really hit into your uh, you know like uh, you know tank right, to generate more leaves, then you know it might still be tough. So yeah, so getting leaves might be difficult, but now it's a bit easier. Uh, I'm not sure how much it matters for spikes and feathers because they usually have excess and you know you don't really proc all the spikes, but you know can still be quite significant. Uh, at least you know uh, more is always better than less. <laughs> okay, then next time is um, next up is the Science Whisper and Tiny Turtle. Science Whisper, of course, was way too strong. That's way too strong, right? So now well, it instead of you can target a particular enemy to get them to sleep. Now it's the sleep is just to random enemy. Okay, so I'm not sure if it can increase summon. So if it increase summons, then it might be a bit bad just because then if you put a summon to sleep, it doesn't do anything. Um, yeah, I think it's still going to be strong just because of the reverse heal and uh, and also of course the, uh, the the primary effect, which is of course blocking the HP loss, which is still I would say quite strong. Uh, just really just disrupting reverse heal stuff, right? Um, so it's, I think it's still going to be strong, but at least the sleep is random now. Tiny Turtle finally at least will uh, get a bit of a buff for five, first five attack, which is not bad. Uh, but of course now with the change in Science Whisper, now it's again back into to one of those only option with targeted sleep, right? You can actually target uh, any enemy, but of course right, it's still subject to taunt. So this is where yeah, Silent Whisper was just so strong it's because they can ignore Taunt and just sleep, whatever. Uh, but at least Tiny Turtle, it still follows Taunt, right, because it's an attack. So, yeah, so I would say definitely more balanced, but of course that just means sleep might not be as strong. Um, but having said that, there is quite a lot of sleep um, support, as you'll see later. Okay, then Peacemaker, um, yeah, not really going to go through too much. It's just now it's target any enemy, it's still not going to be too strong, but moving in the right direction. Uh, similarly for, I think, Curly and Fragile, uh, but in this case it's changed to deal pure damage on Fragile targets. Again, you know, not sure how significant it is, but yeah, uh, still moving in the right direction. And then two new cards that is, well, change. Puppy Ears is interesting in a sense that it get an sort of like a carrot-like buff, where in this case uh, it buffs the attack, by healing other ally axes. Um, so every time other ally axes get healed, then yeah, you you gain some attack. So that's yes, really is quite similar to a carrot. Um, okay, and then the last one is definitely interesting. Yeah, the last one. Uh, it's well, the effect is basically that it's now two hits, and right? the base is. Of course, it's pretty low, like 35, which is of course just means 70 at the base level. But it depends on the, the or how many cards are in your deck, which is pretty interesting concept, right? It's kind of a new thing that they tried out, I think. Uh, it get plus 10 damage if your deck only has the 13 to 16 uh, cards, meaning if you get rid of two cards, then it gets plus 10 damage. If you get rid of the uh, six cards, all right, then 
uh, you get like uh, 30 bonus damage. Of course, it's times two because it's two hits. And if you get rid of uh, 13 cards, right, because if you have, I think, less or fewer than six cards, then it actually gets 115 damage per hit. Right, plus 115, sorry, yeah. plus 115 means basically like uh, 150 damage per hit. So that's actually going to be pretty strong, I would say. I think I actually see a typo here. I think of 12, this should be, uh, no. so it's two cards. And then next time it's six cards, and then it's 13 cards. Okay, so uh, yeah, it can be good, but it's just, it feels very, very hard to achieve, like the 30, uh, 300 damage. And uh, yeah, so I think it's interesting, but I'm not sure how easy it is to actually build a team around it, especially because there's a tail, which of course then compete with Nemo Tail, where that's the one of the cards where you really want to just banish off right, and thin out your deck, but because it's a tail, you can't really do that. So that's going to be a challenge. Okay, then next up, uh, let's just go through all the runes. Uh, this is a lot to go through, so I don't think I'll go through everything. I'll just probably go through like uh, something that's more exciting. So because each, you can see that uh, each class already have yeah so many of the new ones, um, and not just new ones, but old ones that are changed as well. So okay, uh, first up is uh, Way of Aquatic. Basically, becomes the new bubble shooter because of the rework. I'm not gonna go into the details. Just read the blog post. I would say, uh, yeah. So Black Ink, okay, I'll just at least uh, talk about the new ones. So Black Ink is the one that uh, draws a, well, it's more about Jinx Synergy, actually. It's a Jinx Synergy. So whenever an enemy draws a curse card, they actually get one bad luck, which actually can be quite, you know, can be quite significant, right? Uh, because it basically just speed up the bad luck, all right? And of course, uh, Synergize is very well with Jinx. Um, so because the other thing is when each turn ends, if... Your opponent has bad luck, which is going to be pretty soon, right? Uh, and all enemies takes uh, 13 pure damage. So yeah, so it's just a lot of pure damage over every turn. Of course, you know, 13 is not that much, but it kind of adds up over turn as well. So it definitely adds to the Jinx. Um, yeah, so another choice for basically Jinx team. So uh, the other new one is the Bombshell Maker which uh, has the bomb, new bombshell stuff, but basically it has something to do with splash damage. Uh, to be honest, I don't think it is too strong, but um, yeah, so I'm not going to go into the detail, but basically it says, uh, you can read here, right? it's, it's a mistake, so it's supposed to be pretty strong, and I think in terms of the numbers, it can be quite strong. Definitely work very well with like high damage card, like Tiny Fan, of course, but also like maybe Sando. Uh, but I'm just not sure how good it is compared to other Mystic Runes. Um, yeah, so Celestial might, might even be better. That's because uh, you actually need the Bombshell to slowly ramp up because every turn, or well, every start of your turn, I like actually gain two Bombshell, which is not a lot, then you have to, you know, like maybe max is 10, right? So it will take some time to get up to speed as opposed to other Runes that can just deal damage. So. Okay, let's go into Beast. So for Beast, um, yeah, quite a lot of uh, well, runes overall actually go from epic to rare, right? So you can see in this case, like Ronus main go to rare. Uh, that just means it's not solo. Uh, still, yeah, not too sure. I guess in rare it could be actually good, but outside of rare, not sure. Okay, let's just talk about the new one. So Inspiration Hero, so an epic. So uh, it's quite interesting because it basically it says uh, it kind of gain rage to ally axes right so what gain one rage um, so you can think of it as like an AOE kind of um, uh, endless anger but a bit slower just because it only does it every other rounds um, yeah so that's that's one um, yeah so but it can still be good, I think, like especially for um, you know, Fury synergies, and that's because the other side of this uh, rune is gain 10% or plus 10 card stack whenever allies gain Fury, and I think it kind of stacks up, right? So of course, even how many times uh, those Fury uh, teams can get into Fury, right? It's just like maybe turn round four or something, right? Then all three axes already get into Fury mode, then this can actually be quite significant, right? Because the plus one also helps. You know, basically, it's like giving each axis two rage effectively. So that's pretty strong. Okay, Reckless Hunter actually uh, get another change. Uh, now the damage 
uh, bonus damage scales down a bit, but it now has blood synergy, uh, bleed synergy. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, per hit attacks apply three bleed to targets and to self. Yeah, to self part probably not too much of a problem, but it's more about to target. I think can actually be pretty strong. Then you can uh, put more bleeds. But of course, in epic, not sure how good bleed can be. But now at least I think it's you know like there's another option. Okay, finally for Beast is that of course there's the Mystic one, so every single uh, class has a new Mystic rune, and this one is uh, Counter Stance. Uh, yeah, so pretty interesting, like, it's good to see different mechanics, but in this case it's basically a well, quite a defensive rune, but also offensive, so that's why it's like a counter attack kind of thing, right? So whenever it's attacked, okay, then it does the counter attack, and what the counter attack does is, it uh, basically, first of all, it's take uh, lower damage, so like minus 5 per skill card in your deck bone by this Axie, a skill or secret card, and max to well, minus 25 damage, uh, well, minus 25% damage can be quite significant, I must say. Uh, but first, it requires you to have like 5 skill cards, which is not easy, of course. You can gain more skill cards with like strawberries and stuff like that, right? Uh, so that could add up, but of course, that will take time. Uh, and the other thing is also, okay, another part of the counter attack is that it will deal 5 damage per attack card in your deck so again you can of course try to scale up your number of attack cards of course feather dagger is the one that you, know, you should be able to think about right, so you can have a lot of feather dagger and then that could you know, help you survive for longer but also actually deals more damage and that's because uh, the other part of counter stance is deal plus 5% uh, damage per attack card in your deck owned by this axiom cap as plus 25 so it's basically you know if everything works out well then maximum is like plus 25 damage minus 25 uh, percent uh damage uh taken yeah plus 25 percent damage uh, dealt which is pretty strong but of course it's not going to be easy to get there but and also the 25 percent is it that good i mean like compared to again celestial might that kind of thing it's just straight up 35 percent yeah, so this is the part where I'm not too sure, not too sure. Uh, okay, then let's move on to Bird. So for Bird, then, um, yeah, you can see Raven's Tactic uh, reworked again. Okay, so in this case, Raven's Tactic now is, uh, to be honest, I don't really know what it does. It's just, uh, well, at least Grand Feather to ally Axie, but also gain Plume, whatever Plume is. Um, yeah, but ultimately deals more damage, so deals uh, plus twenty percent damage. Okay, fair descent is the one that doesn't really change much, which I must say is I won't say disappointing, but uh, yeah, it's, it's still going to be very strong. The only nerf is okay. The if it, it consumes four, except uh, it, well, other than three, so it, instead of three feathers, you consume four feathers when you get the feather daggers. That's basically it. So of course, one feather stack might make a difference, but yeah, usually it might not, so, okay, so that's basically that. Okay, Sharp Talent actually shift to Mystic, which is pretty interesting, uh, but it's basically the real old Raven's tactic, so they kind of just, you know, switch things around. Uh, and finally, the Bird, the Mystic Rune, is the Flock's Might, and it is quite interesting. I didn't really expect, like, a Mystic then with, like, Summons, uh, so this is where, like, Maybe summons actually can get enough support for all three eras. So at least there are some some things, right? Uh, there's some effort made in pushing summons. So in this case, is what it does is that when any turn starts, then randomly summon one uh, little Robin or Mavis, okay? And the summon actually deals more damage uh, and yeah, more HP, but ultimately it's more like randomly summon one summon and well, bird summon at least, right? So I would say Mavis, it will be a high roll. Robin will probably be a low roll. Mavis, because it has the disruption of you know, energy fragments and stuff. So I, and of course, ramp as well. So yeah, but yeah, so interesting that there's like a, kind of a high roll, low roll thing, I see. Uh, but still, I think it's more to do with having a summon kind of blocks an attack depending on what kind of team you're facing against. Uh, but of course, against AOE, it might not be the, you know, no, much of an effect, but yeah, so it's good to see some summon stuff. Okay, and next up we have Bug. So for Bug, then you know, uh, first new one is Blood Beetle, a rare one, and quite interesting. It says once per turn, then the Axis first attack deals pure damage. So yeah, uh, not sure how <laughs> important it is, especially in rare. Uh, the pure damage is like, uh, but 
at least um, the interesting part is actually that it says this axis pure damage attacks steals 10 HP and that is actually can be quite good because I'm thinking about like things like uh, blood loss where I mean of course it's a mistake and it steals more but in this case it's uh, you know in a rare era you know it steals a bit less but still I can imagine like a bug with a lot of pure attack uh, pure damage attack cards can just just steal a lot more HP. So, uh, but having said that, though, yeah, the alert could be a problem. So, yeah, so that's that. Um, because you know, the target with alert, then you can't steal from it. So, yeah. Um, and then, uh, Fate Maker. Okay, this one again, never really seen play, so that's why it reworked again. But I feel like this time around is ooh, is actually quite. Quite, I can see it's quite strong. Okay, uh, let's just read the text. It basically says this axis first attack in each turn discards one random card per energy cost from enemy hand or draw pile, prioritizing energy uh, enemy hand. So basically, it's kind of like a free card worm or free mental stagger. Right, but every turn, uh, sorry, uh, every no, nah, it's pretty much like yeah, every turn, right? If you have an attack from this axis, the first attack will basically be a garage worm, that kind of thing. So I can see that this is going to be um, pretty strong in terms of just disrupting opponent's plan. Um, so especially like, against combo team, it could be pretty good, but just in general, like getting rid of like Sando or just key cards, like Cucumber Slice or whatever, right? So I think it's going to be good. So without you know, just having have to use the uh, you know, Garage Worms is because Epic, you don't even have the Mentis Daga, right? But maybe in Mistake with Mentis Daga, you might not even need Fate Maker just because the Mentis Daga is just, can already do the job. But yeah, in Epic, I think this is, can be very annoying to play against, let's put it that way. Okay, then finally for Bug Mistake, we have Greedy Leech, uh, which to be honest, I don't know about this one, right? Because, okay, it's basically a steel synergy, which is very interesting, uh, but not sure about the power level. So first of all, it's a plus two cunning uh, when the battle starts, so sure, okay, that's good. But then it says, when stealing with the card from targets without alert, then steal 50% of the card stats as HP. So basically, it just steals a lot. Um, yeah, basically that's that. Of course, there's still the alert mechanism, meaning you can't really steal. Uh, well, you can only really kind of steal once per turn kind of thing. Of course, you can steal from different um, targets. Uh, so, of course, one thing I can think of is like the Aku Piranha kind of thing. So I can imagine that could could kind of play out, but otherwise, I don't know. I mean, um, maybe it's just there hasn't really been much of a steal team out there yet maybe but like maybe someone will come up with something okay then let's uh, look at plants plants that are quite a lot you can see right kind of a bit uh, uh pretty much everything uh, on the whole page so okay first one is force uh roma a rare one and this one has steep synergy so you can see there's quite a lot of steep support in this case is uh more like a tangler right? when this actually is attacked so once per turn, of course, only. Okay, apply two sleep to the attacker. So that's once per turn. So which can still be quite good, right? Just because in a rare era, you might not be able to redirect and stuff, right? So you're kind of forced to hit into it, uh, into your tank or something, right? And so, okay, the other thing is when each turn ends, sleeping enemies lose 10 HP. So that, mm, you know, it's not that great. But of course, if you can actually apply more sleep right, uh, with your other cards, then that could add up, right? Uh, and you know this can be very annoying for the opponent, especially if you already uh, you know, have some of the opponents actually sleeping, and then they can only use another you know, awake axi to hit into you. But then that also falls asleep, and then they might have to force to waste an energy or something. So I think it can be quite good at rare, but otherwise, um, yeah, I don't think it's that powerful after the rare era. Okay, then uh, I guess the other one, okay, so Rise and Ruin is the other one I want to talk about. Of course, um, we already talked about Forest Breath, I think. Oh, sorry, the Forest Wrath, and then actually Forest Breath is also uh, change. Oh, well, I say change, I mean, it's more like you get more of them. So at the start of the battle, you get one, and it's already put in your hand, which is very handy, of course, because uh, yeah, you can just, you don't have to wait to draw it, right? So you, a lot more consistent. And the other thing is that uh, I think when your turn starts on even rounds or every other rounds, you get another forest breath in your hand. So it really just helps you with getting the forest uh, breath to you know, cleanse, right? Uh, so I think that's actually pretty good. 
Um, so yeah, just basically giving you more Forest Wrath. Uh, that's how I see it. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, of course, so I should talk about Healing Pulse. Healing Pulse, of course, finally is a nerf. Uh, of course, this, this is not surprising. And I think the biggest nerf, of course, in this case is that the damage, of course, when you overheal, and you get a shield, but also it damages the opponent. But in this case, the damage now, right, it will be changed to, to the highest HP enemy. So that make a whole lot of differences because uh, instead of just killing the lowest HP enemy or just targeting that, you're basically spreading the damage across just because the highest HP enemy will probably change after each time you overheal, right? Uh, so you don't, you can't really pick up KO that easily. So I think I really quite like that change. Of course, there's also some numerical changes as well and the splash conversion you only apply to allies but not uh, enemy and so on. So that's definitely lower down the power level and now I think um, yeah, it's going to be quite a lot weaker, but I think it's still going to be quite vi uh, viable in the sense of uh, it's, it's still a lot of value, I must say, but the value is mostly from the healing, um, yeah, and a bit less from the, you know, yeah, from the damage, but still, I can still see the, you know, the same thing with the uh, summons, with the uh, cucumber slice and stuff like that can still be pretty strong. Okay, um, so for Plant Mystic, uh, we have the rune is Jungle Nightmare, and interestingly, it is a sleep synergy. That's why I say sleep is getting a lot of support. So, okay, this one is this. When attacked, then take my um, well, minus 20% damage. So that's actually quite a lot of damage uh, reduction. Uh, and once per turn, apply two sleep to the attacker. All right, so very similar to Forest uh, Aroma in a way, uh, but of course it has the 20% damage reduction, which is, I would say, quite good. Um, but of course, it's a mistake, so that's why, I mean, I, if, you know, given as a mistake, it might not be that good, but you know, putting sleep is good, but also it says, on enemies with sleep, single attacks and reverse heal consume sleep and steal 10 HP per sleep uh, consumed, and then apply three sleep as well. So. I can, of course, like it's, you know, like that quite a lot. Um, because that uh, usually you might not run you know, single attacks, but I think reverse heal is the one that actually you know, you'll probably run quite a lot. I'm thinking, of course, uh, Silence Whisper, but also probably maybe even Strawberry kind of thing, right? Because every Strawberry, then you basically heal, uh, and then you put more sleep on. Uh, or rather, you put free sleep and then you steal and then you put free sleep again and then you just you can steal quite a bit. That's what I'm trying to say. So yeah, um, so quite defensive, but also it can deal quite a bit of damage with reverse heal. Okay, then let's look at reptile. So reptile of Inoki toned down. So this is actually kind of the overall theme. I feel like that they are toning down the. Star Trek axis runes so that of course like people should then buy the Oculus craft or buy the you know NFT runes. Right. So that's I think what they are going for. Right. So that of course this, this is good for the economy, right? It's because the starter runes, once you have it, you have it, right? You don't need to craft, so then uh, I kind of you know yeah, they don't really earn as much, so that's part of the reason. Uh, okay, then let's get into the other um, changes for reptile. So uh, Shell Shell actually turned to rare, which is pretty interesting. Of course, it toned down, right? Uh, it goes from uh, 15 to 10 in terms of damage and healing, but uh, no more solo, meaning I can imagine there could be like some sort of sustained team with like multiple Shell Shot or something, you know, that could be possible. Okay, so a uh, new rune uh, for Epic is a uh, Desert Protector. Um, yeah, this one I'm not too sure because uh, it says okay until turn f uh, round five, then energy uh, enemy turn starts, then you gain guard and shield. A uh, twenty shield, twenty shield is really not too much, but guard is interesting. Um, yeah, and then when guard triggers, then you deal one damage to closest enemy per two shield loss. So it's really just more guard. So this is the part where I'm not too sure, just because I don't think there's much so-called like you know, people playing guard. Um, so. Yeah, it really depends on like uh, the opponent as well because some opponents might not trigger guard or what. So, not too sure uh, this one. Yeah, really not sure. But I don't think it's gonna be that good, but who knows? Okay, Venom Master. I think I have mentioned because of the Venom Burst. Um, yeah. So I think the other change that I think could be quite good is actually that now the application of poison is not when you play the card. It's actually every turn, right? So every turn, start of turn, then it will just apply. Uh, effectively like well, two poisons to uh, random randomly three times so yeah so basically six stacks of poison 
not too bad, I must say, because it's passive, right? So you don't have to do anything. You, you will just get it, so it just speeds up the poison. I'm not so sure how you know how good it is compared to other runes, but I think you know poison teams may want to run this, uh, especially given that Vinoki is a bit nerfed at this point. So yeah, I think Venom Master it kind of basically replaces Vinoki poison. Okay, finally, Reptile Mystic one is Spike Spray. So this one is really the one that I'm really not sure. Uh, okay, so I mean on paper it may sound good. It's similar to like Tri Spikes, can be quite good, especially in like epic. Uh, oh, sorry, I mean rare. Uh, but okay, let's just look at the mistake, right? So, so what it does is that when your turn starts, then plus three spikes will get a lot of spikes, sure, right? When it hits, then uh, actually it takes uh, well, minus like 20 damage, right? Up to okay, so in this case, it's like actual, it's not percentage, but actual, you know, damage. Um, so yeah, usually you, if you have like 20 blood spike or more, then you'll get 20 uh, minus 20 damage, which is actually good again. It's always good against things like uh, Feather, right? but uh, not very good against things like, like Sandals. Let's put it that way. Right, so, it's like, uh, so that's always the thing, right? So that's why, I don't know, right? it doesn't really patch any problem or any like short or weaknesses of Spikes, but it's kind of this retain all the weaknesses of Spikes, but it's just trying to do it better. So in that sense, I don't think it kind of changes too much spikes is still going to be very hard to use especially against teams that don't really hit into you too many times uh, you don't really proc the blood spike of course you can self proc but still you know not too much um, and then there's the other part where it says um, you know when hit right then you, you have the minus damage but also it consumes 25 percent of the blood spike okay and deal three pure damage per blood spike consumed to all enemies so this is kind of an aoe which i think it can be quite good but uh one of the potential problem of course is that then it kind of uh of course doesn't have to run tri spike but it does compete with tri spike because if you're consuming a 25 percent blood spike then your tri spike will be a lot lower level uh, in terms of power um just because you're losing blood spike so yeah, that's why I'm really not sure about this one. Okay, let's go into the Dawn. Okay, so Dawn, uh, so start with the Tiny Guardian, pretty cute name, uh, pretty cute effect as well, is that against summons, uh, this actually summon gains 10 shields, so not really a lot, uh, and it gains guard. So again, you know, it can be quite interesting, especially if you have AoE heal, uh, sorry, AoE shield, right, with guard, you know, with more shield on the summons and stuff, then that can definitely, uh, adds up, I, I feel. So I think, uh, yeah, especially in the rare uh, era, summons has actually traditionally been okay, I right? doing not bad. So I think with all this support, at least it could be there somewhere. Right? At least it's, I would say it's playable. I would say so. Definitely excited to see more summon stuff. Uh, healing force also summons. Okay, so in this case. He adds the damage reduction to summons as well. So yeah, so definitely uh, in the epic, there's more summon support. So yeah, good to see. Uh, then uh, Celestial Might is actually one that I want to mention also. is because yeah, it's already been pretty good. So I'm not sure why they buff it more. And this time, it basically they add plus one fragment per energy spend when played. So I'm like... Huh, but before it's already pretty good and now it helps with ramp as well so yeah i'm just not sure um of course uh you, the nemo and stuff is kind of nerfed and maybe they just want to make it even better than before i'm not sure yeah but it's definitely a very good very good rune okay finally for uh dawn they have missed the new mistake which is holy guardian uh, so a defensive rune, so I see this as actually in a way kind of similar to Gaia, but I feel like it's like now you have more options for defensive runes so other than like Gaia, you have other things. Uh, so Holy Guardian would be one, so in this case, you okay, increase max XP, sure, but it says take 15% um, you know, less damage from all sources, okay? And 25% of the damage taken by other allies, so it's taken by this axis instead, meaning it's kind of like really a tank, right? It absorbs damage as well. So let's say you put it uh, at the back or something, or at the mid, or well, usually at the back, right? And then if uh, opponent hit the front, it will actually kind of absorb some of that damage. And yeah, so it's pretty interesting. So it's just another, I'll say, yeah, defensive rune. Okay, let's go into Dusk. So for Dusk, uh, I would say 
not much. Uh, so my, my addiction moved to rare, I think. Yeah, so that's uh, the main thing. And actually, I feel like in rare could be quite good. Um, you know, plus 15 um, attack and also, you know, like damage reduction uh, for 15% can be pretty good in rare, I must say. But of course, the, it's always that problem is like what kind of team will use this, right? Uh, of course, maybe poison, maybe bleed, or, you know, it's just finding the right um, team to get into. Because the power, like, it, when, when you can actually use the, you know, that effect, I think it's very strong, but it's just hard to do I guess in epic but I think in rare is probably more possible because there's a limited or more limited option of uh, runes and so my addiction might make it let's put it that way okay so then for epic new one is a plague bearer so this one is quite interesting uh, I must say I have really no idea what's going on but basically first of all as you when, when your turn starts you gain six counters of one random debuff so basically you are debuffing yourself that's basically how it goes you debuff yourself and then when you attack then you take you know, less damage depending on how much debuff like minus three damage per debuff counter on this axis so if you have like a max uh, 10 uh 30 percent but that means you have 10 debuff counter on this axis then you basically you know, have minus well, 30 percent damage reduction and when attacked also like it was only when you had when we get attacked then you get the plague wave as well the so plague wave is uh, you cancel two on this axis and the enemy loses hp uh, equal to two times the debuff counter on this axis so yeah i'm not too sure yeah it's just a lot of uh, you gain the debuff and uh, the worst thing is that you don't really know because it's a random debuff so it could be sleep it could be i don't know like, like bleed it could be fear, right? It can be very annoying sometimes. It can work against you for sure. Uh, maybe even like poison, and then uh, you know you, you yeah. So I have, yeah. So it's I have no idea how good it is just because the debuff can hurt quite a bit. Okay, then we go into the mystic and soul eater again. Finally, I mean I, another change, and actually in this case not so much of a change, oh, not so big of a change. It's just they remove the self HP loss when the effect trigger. And if you don't know what the effect is, don't worry. Just because uh, you really don't really see play. Uh, so I don't think I've even faced. Okay, I guess I faced Soul Eater, but like, yeah, very rarely. So what does is when this Axie targets an enemy Axie. So that's quite interesting. It targets an enemy Axie. Whenever it targets an enemy Axie, then dispel the enemy Axies one time. Sure, but then the main thing is they lose 6% of their current HP. Okay, so at least it's not max HP, it's just current HP. So, of course, as, as the opponent's HP can lower, then it will deal a bit less damage, or rather they lose less. But still, uh, I can imagine this can actually be pretty good uh, on things like... I'm thinking about Feather Dagger, really, right? Because with Feather Dagger, you can target an enemy Axie, and then one Feather Dagger, can, if you, they can just deal 6% of the current HP that actually can be maybe like extra 20 damage or something, right? So I think you know, that of course can add up with uh, the you know feather bonus damage and all that as well. So yeah, I can see it as, yeah, that could be a use case. Okay, finally, we have the new uh, Mystic Dusk uh, Rune, which is Wakening Aura. So Wakening Aura, Pretty short description. Again, it's like um, actually more of a defensive rune, but I think I quite like it. Is that it says enemy deals minus 30% damage. Okay, sounds too good to be true, but only of course is for the first round, and then but every round, then that effect decreases by 5% until I guess round three, right? So meaning I, I think after round three, then it will be minus 15%. So effectively, you can think of it as like minus 15% damage for the whole game, just because. To be honest, like the first two rounds, there are only a few cards. Uh, your opponent only has like a few energy, uh, rather, yeah, really not many energy, so you can't really do much. So basically, it's minus 15% damage by the opponent, which I think can actually be quite effective um, because it's like, no, uh, it's not, you know, it's this all opponent, or it's an aura kind of thing. So yeah, of course, it will stack with other defensive runes as well. But of course, you don't—I don't know how many defensive runes you want to run. But you know, this is another option. So I think it's—it's it's good to see more options. Okay, finally for Mac. So for Mac, we have uh, what was that? I'm turning to rare, so you can see like, a lot of those turn to rare. Uh, yeah, but I'm not sure how good it is now. It changed to like 15%. So yeah, I mean, 
um, I will probably play a way of plan if I want the you know, 15% uh, damage reduction because this is only when shielded. Uh, of course, the reflect damage could be good, but still, yeah, I'm not sure. Not sure about this one. Uh, okay, then the one new rune, I um, epic new rune is the solid bulwark. So uh, this one, uh, yeah, so it's more about bulwark. Right? So it kind of just gives you two bulwark, and we start the battle, and then. Uh, yeah, the main thing I'm not too sure about is like when your turn ends, then 20% of damage from this Axis attack this turn is granted as shield to ally. So it's really quite a mid rangey kind of thing. It's like you use this Axis to attack to then gain shield to allies. Uh, yeah, so I'm not too sure where it fits in. Maybe like Toe Pass, I can think of it as like pretty good. Maybe like thinking about. Yeah, because like this actually has to do quite a lot of attack, but then you also want to have some sort of shield synergy, so pure damage, of course, like um, like sorry fighter kind of thing maybe. Uh, but yeah, I think it has to be pretty specific, right? Um, I think. Okay, then uh, shield. Okay, wow, shield backup. I don't really, I don't even want to talk about it, but <laughs> it's it's basically I think. Uh, makes it a lot more annoying to play against now, I feel. Uh, just because now it's uh, gain 20% shield from all sources. This is a lot of shield, basically, it's facing a lot of shield. Uh, and then take mine 15% uh, less damage from attacks, uh, and then bonus 10% more when shielded. And usually it's shielded, meaning it's now 25% damage reduction. <laughs> 20% um, more shield, and then it will also retain 50% of the shield, and of course, usually you have Cocoon as well, and you'll probably get up to 10, 100%, so yeah, all these just makes it so, so, so annoying to play against. Uh, if you are just aggro and you have no way of getting through the shield, you don't have like you no know, death mark, or like, you know, of course, they'll usually play like Cleanser, and you can't really get through all the Cleanser to put death mark and stuff, and this is, yeah, yeah, this is that, yeah, that's just that. Okay. Finally, uh, for uh, Mac Mystic Rune, the new one is the Rocket Barrage, which is pretty interesting. Uh, it's yeah, it's just rockets. Um, every three hits by ally axes, then it fires a rocket to the lowest. Okay, the key is the lowest HP enemy axis, which is actually like um, just reminding my uh, yeah, reminded of the. <laughs> Uh, yeah, healing pulse, but anyway, uh, in this case is at least not as strong, I don't think. Um, okay, so what is a rocket is that it deals damage equal to total of 20% of the damage from the last three hits. So basically, every three hits, it will deal the rocket will deal 20% of that, uh, I guess, um, some of those three hits, basically. So effectively, you can think of it as uh, every hit deals another 20% more damage. That's one way to think about it. So it's like a 20% damage buff to all the ally axis hits, which I think is pretty strong. And not just that, is that hits from this axis count as 35% instead. Right? So for this axis, then it's actually more of like a 35% buff. Right? Uh, so actually that's like celestial might level. Right? So well, of course it's delayed, so the only problem is that it's delayed, but it's actually not just that, because there's also big rocket as well, because what happens is that for every three rockets fired, meaning every nine hits, then you fire a big rocket, and a big rocket will deal another 35% of the last three rockets damage. So in a way, you think of it as, yeah, so uh, every single attack will like, buy your, um, you know, Axis will deal maybe 20 something to even like up to 40 percent extra damage. So it, I think it's quite quite strong. I, the uh, no, the numbers I, I think work out to be pretty strong. But of course, the downside is that it is quite delayed, and that might be a problem where like you might not be able to kill, um, pick up KOs and stuff. But having said that, I mean it does target the lowest enemy, so that helps with picking up KOs. Uh, but it is quite delayed, and of course, once like uh, this axis is KO'd, then you don't really have that. So especially uh, you don't get the big rocket off uh, before it get KO'd, then it's gonna be a bit of a waste. So yeah, so that's the the trade off. Hey, finally we have the neutral. So there are also uh, two new runes as well here. Uh, Rare one is Evolution Stone. Um, to be honest, don't think you'll see much play. It's okay, sure. Gain 10% stat uh, for this Axis card. Yeah. And then plus 10 more for every burst level, which sounds actually pretty strong just because then, oh, it's basically like plus 20%, right? If you get to one burst, right? But uh, the difficult part is getting to the burst. I think, especially with like the nerf of Nemo, it's just going to be harder to get to burst. But of course, if 
you're playing like a burst kind of oriented team, then that could be good, I feel. Um, and maybe I'm just thinking, yeah, now I think about it, like maybe in the Epic Era, you know, this plus 20% stat is not bad, right? Well, of course, you have like a better way to ramp in uh, the rare, especially with like um, the energy shot and so on. So maybe, maybe, um, but rare might be, yeah, don't really see much play, I don't think. Okay, then the next one is, um, yeah, uh, the pure luck, which is, um, yeah, I would say not much. Uh, so, well, actually, it kind of becomes like a, uh, what's that called again? Let me, okay, holy prayer, yes. That's because now the bonus, right, is to all allied axes, I think, right? So the bone, like, bonus stats is plus 10. Percent, so it's kind of scaled down, but for every single axis. So in that case, it's basically like yeah, giving all your axes plus ten, unless of course if you have a cross cut in your hand and draw pile, right? I think right, uh, then you draw a card instead of having a ten percent. So uh, yeah, but I think it's actually can be quite good, right? Because it's off the top plus ten percent, I think. Uh, okay, finally for Mystic, we have the, well, well for neutral Mystic, we have the uh, Vengeful uh, Soul, which uh, actually feels very, very similar to Last Wish in that sense, where, okay, you still have the plus you know, max HP, 12% in this case, and then on death, it gains Vengeance. Vengeance is, uh, if you don't remember, right, it's basically a kind of like a buff kind of thing, where the next attack will deal that much more damage, and in this case, it's like okay, against vengeance equals to 15% of the max HP. So effectively, it's like okay, it will do more damage in the next attack as opposed to doing like a, you know, I think maybe 40 AOE. So in that sense, I think it's actually weaker than last wish. But um, I think the interesting thing is that on death, right? Then the last part of this is cards in your deck gain plus 15% stat. So that's actually the most significant, I think. That's because, uh, okay, once this X is KO'd, then your, all your other cards, or all your other Xyz card, um, will gain for f plus 15%. So, yeah, I think, uh, of course, you know, uh, it's, you know, as a mystic, I think it's actually quite respectful, I must say. Uh, of course, it's neutral as well. I'm um, just thinking it could play with something like Purge, right, where, of course, this plus 15% is like the base stat, I believe, right? Of course, then with things like Purge or other things that can scale, um, maybe even I'm thinking about Sando or something, then that definitely can like, add up just because it, you know, it's, there are not many ways to actually, you know, increase your stat. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so... All right, then let's move on to charms. So charms, there are really not a lot, I must say. So I uh, don't really have the you know, figures here, but basically uh, one, of the one of the reasons is because even though there are 10 new charms, but actually nine of them are basically just, just kind of the same thing. Right? Um, and what they do is they just do so-called card level plus one, meaning I, from what I understand, will basically evolve the card to stage two. Okay, so basically, uh, it's a very good, I must say, a uh, very good mechanic because, of course, a lot of new players, they might not be able to like, just evolve the Axie so quickly, right? but they want to play with evolve parts, then you can actually put a charm on to play with the revolve cards, uh, revolve parts, which is actually you know pretty pretty good concept. Of course, uh, the highest level, you probably don't want to play this is because it does take like 4 PP, and actually the rare one takes like 5 PP. So, of course, you might want to use the PP on something else. Uh, but still, like for a casual player, like lower level, uh, you know, rank, lower rank player, then if you just want to play and experience evolve parts, I think this will be one good way. Um, yeah. Okay. So, and then I should talk about the the other one. Last gift is actually quite a good one uh, for summons because it's a three PP epic charm. So three PP is actually pretty cheap, I would say. Um, and yeah. Unfortunately, it cannot play with in rare just because summons usually is good in rare, but uh, still, I think it's pretty good because what it does is that it says it deals 50% of the summon's max HP as damage to all enemies when the summons die. So, kept at 50, uh, 25, but still, it's basically a free 25 per, uh, damage in total or something, right? Uh, of course, assuming like, all three axes are alive for our opponent. Yeah, so it might actually kind of like push it up, uh, you know, the summons power level up just because every time you summon something, I uh, summon a summon, then 
that when, when they get killed, then it will deal you know, certain AoE damage. So I think it's actually can be quite significant. And it's only three PP. So this usually I it's quite interesting that I they when they want to push something, they will just put a three PP first and then maybe nerf it later, like next season to four or something. So uh, let's see if it's gonna be too good. Um not too sure, but summon I think is gonna you know, definitely be able to well we'll see it uh, at at least for rare and Epic, not sure about Mystic, but still, yeah, I think it's, yeah, we'll, we'll see it, I think. Um, finally, uh, there are three, uh, three kind of uh, uh, not existing charm that now gets guaranteed uh, effects, so the novice spell get guaranteed damage, the purifying incense get guaranteed uh, cleanse or the spell, and then the deadly spell get guaranteed uh, confused, right? So I think it's definitely you know, it's good for, for these charms, I think. Like, having a guaranteed effect is definitely good. Um, yeah, so uh, I definitely see that, uh, yeah, it's going to be overall pretty good. And actually, the final one is that Bing's um, ice cream actually also changed. Uh, well, is it buffed to heal all allied axes or uh, actually equals to 20% of the attack. So instead of just like one axe, it heals all allied axe, I think. So that's I think can be good for like, you know, of course, like the big attack kind of card. So because it actually can heal quite significantly for rare. So yeah. Anyway, so that is pretty much all I have for today. So a lot, obviously, this video is probably going to be way too long. But uh, if you really get through all this, then well, here's the conclusion. Really, I do feel like it's yeah one of the biggest update for sure. Right, 20 new runes with other runes updates as well so it's not just the 20, 20 new runes it's just you know there are more runes being updated definitely like a lot of more possibilities now i think summon sleep and possibly goo can make it i feel uh nemo nerf definitely is great i think um yeah there's more options for those you know like the ear and the tail slot i would say um yeah and yeah interesting to see how energy coin will turn out hey that's the final reminder is that yeah, everything that I said, right? All of these changes can, you know, can still have further changes. Let's put it that way, like before the start of season eight. So they can always change something. Uh, so, you know, don't just buy axes based on this. Of course, you know, they, they, you, you run a risk just because they can always change certain things before the start of season eight. Um, yeah, so uh, the other thing is, of course, like have fun with playing with it because it will be available for free during the preseason, I think from 20th of March. So yeah, have fun theory crafting, playing uh, with the new stuff. And yeah, that's it for today. And I'll see you in the next video.